you know, it's hard for me to say where I get my ideas. Uh, it's, you know, it's one of those things that I just have a gift for, for coming up with stuff. Uh, I, have, I have deficits. Um, I have severe learning problems, which caused me a lot of trouble all the way through college uh, because I have severe dyslexia. I actually flunked three grades before I got out of high school. Um, and, and so it's, for me, you know, the, the, the writing is, it's a very right brain activity. Uh, it's very abstract thought. That's what dyslexics tend to often be very good at. And so that's my gift. And my weakness is that I'm a slow reader. I, I have difficulty spelling. I spell everything phonetically. Um, obviously, I'm, even though I ran many businesses and still do run several businesses, um, my bookkeeping skills are, are frightening. You know, they're terrible. Uh, because I, I, I transpose numbers just like I do letters. And um, so it's, you know, it's, it, I, have, I have those failings, which I've learned to adjust for. And, and I have these gifts, which, which are the abstract thought. And, and with that comes this endless supply of ideas, which I never seem to be stuck for. Basically, my biggest problem is filtering the ideas so that I don't end up writing something that's not as good as, as, as what it might be if I were a little more careful about making the choice. As a matter of fact, I'm writing a book right now, and I wrote a full 80-page outline and spiked it after I wrote it because I thought, you know what, even though it's really good, I know it's a good story, I know it would work, the outline is clean, it's just not special. And so I am trying more and more to put on myself this desire to have my work be special, as special as I can possibly make it. And I've always done that. I mean, it isn't like I've, like I've tried to just, you know, throw things up into the air and make them happen. Uh, I've always wanted to love everything that I do. My main goal, even when I was creating television, was I would come up with ideas and then I would always ask myself before I went and pitched it to a network, I would say, this was the question I would ask. I would say, in five years, if this is still on the air, would I be willing to, to go home and write one of these over the weekend because we ran out of scripts? Or would it piss me off? <laughs> so, you know, and if I, the answer was, you know what, I think this is such a cool idea that I, that I would like to do it, um, then, I, then, I, then I knew that it was something that I would love and that I could, if I, did, if I made this, the show right, that it would be good. But, but still, it's still an episode of television or a, uh, if you're writing an episode of television, you know, you might not have as much time to parse your idea because we've got to do 24 of them a year and I had six shows on the air, so that's over 100 episodes and, you know, sometimes, I didn't write them all, I had sta a staff of writers under contract, but, but still, you know, I was involved in all those story meetings and sometimes you wouldn't be able to be tough enough on the story selection b because of time requirements. And I got to the place where now that I'm not in that role anymore and I'm, you know, that I'm going to be really, really scrupulous about my novels and, and, and what stories I'm going to tell. And uh, since I think I have a gift for coming up with ideas, you know, it's, it's, it's worth it to me to invest a, three or four weeks and plot something and then not write it than to write something that's less than what I think can be my best work.